Hi everyone, today we're going to do regression analysis using the Microsoft Excel. Now the first thing is that we want to make sure that we have the right tools in order to do the analysis. And so we go to the toolbar and click Tools, and then we go to Excel Add-ins. We have here two options or two choices, which would be the Analysis Tool Pack and the Solver Add-in. What we're interested in would be the Analysis Tool Pack, and so we check it. The reason why we want the Analysis Tool Pack is because it provides data analysis tools for statistical and engineering analysis. And so we click OK. Now we will look for the Data Analysis Tool Pack. And so we go to this tab here and click Data. And to the rightmost, we have the Data Analysis Tool, and we click that as well. Now we see here a lot of options for analysis tools and what we want would be the regression tool and we click OK. So in this box here, we have two sections. We have the input and the output options. Input options is where you input, as the name would suggest, your data values and the output options will show you the different ways of how to show the results of the regression analysis. So we go first with the input. Before anything else, it is important that you are able to identify which of your data values would be the y or the dependent variable, or which of them would be the x or the independent variable. Moreover, when doing regression analysis, you can do two things. One can be a simple linear regression and the other could be a multiple linear regression. With simple linear regression, you're only dealing with two variables, one independent variable and one dependent variable. On the other hand, for multiple linear regression, you can employ two or more variables. For now, let us first do a simple linear regression and we will input the dependent variable first. So we have here labeled y or the dependent variable for the number of weekly riders and we highlight the data values included in it. I am not including the average numbers here because it is not part of the raw data that we are interested in. Now next would be to input the x range or the independent variable. We have here a lot of options or a lot of independent variables but since we're only going to do a simple linear regression, let's just choose one. And for this, we choose the price per week labeled as X1, and we highlight all of the data values. Let us choose a confidence level of 95% or an alpha of 0.05. So this is for your input. Now, next would be the output options. Like I said, this is how you'd like to see the results of the regression analysis. We have three major options. One is the output range, which means that the results of the analysis will be shown on the same worksheet that we have on screen. New worksheet ply means that there will be a new worksheet on this same file, and that is where the analysis results will show up. And new workbook means a new spreadsheet will come out. But for now, let us use an output range. And let's say we want to see our results here at H3, and we click Enter. Now we have here residuals in normal probability. These parts here will show you the graphs or plots of the regression. So it will give you more visual information about how the relationships of the variables would look like. But for now, we'll just focus on the summary statistics. And now we click OK. So we have here the summary output beside. The first thing that you need to look at would be the significance level of the regression analysis. We have here the regression statistics, the ANOVA, and then the coefficients. In order to know the significance level of the regression model, we look at the ANOVA, and I'm going to highlight here the significance F. 
right? So the rule is if it is below 0 0.05 or the alpha that you have chosen, which is for our case 0 0.05, then it is considered as a significant model. So why is it like that? In hypothesis testing, when the value is below 0 0.05, as in for the p-value, it means that it was not able to step out of the rejection area, and so you reject the hypothesis. But for this case, you are not rejecting the hypothesis of your study, let's say if this is for a research paper, but you are going to reject the hypothesis for this specific model. And the hypothesis is that the values or the data sets are same and similar. Now, we don't want that because the main goal for the regression analysis is to look at the relationships between two different variables. Now, it wouldn't make sense to look at the relationships if, in the end, they are very similar or even the same data set. And by rejecting that, we are accepting the alternative hypothesis that they are indeed different data sets and we can further study them. So uh, our significance here is 0 0.05, which means that our model or regression analysis model is significant and we can further study it. The next thing that we will look at would be the R square here. Now, the closer it is to 1, the better, because it means that it has a stronger goodness of fit. Now, what does it mean? A goodness of fit means that the predicted value using the equations of regression is closer to the actual values that we are seeing on here. So these are the actual values. So we have a very strong goodness of fit or strong R square, which means that we can proceed and study this. The rule of thumb as well is that when it is 0 0.2 and below, it's not very much recommended to continue studying it because it renders the whole thing or the whole model insignificant. However, you also need to look at the context of it. If your study is centered on people, or it is a very people-centric study, then a 0.2 R-square or below that may be justified because the behavior of people are not easily measured. And since there are a lot of people and a lot of characteristics or a lot of personality types, there is a lot of variances in their data. So 0.2 and below can be justified. Now, next, we go to the p-value or the significance level of our variables. So we go to this section here below, and we look at the variable x variable 1 and its p-value. Its p-value is very similar to the significance level of the whole model, and it is below 0 0.05. It follows, and so it follows the same rule that if it is below 0 0.05, which is our assigned value of alpha, then it means that it is significant and we can further study our variable. After the p-value, we can now go into coefficient. When you look at the coefficient, you first look at the sign, if it's positive or negative. If it is positive, then there is a direct or a positive relationship between the x variable and the y variable. It means that for every unit increase in x, the y also increases by the number that is seen here in the coefficient. If it is negative, then it means that for every unit increase in x, there's a corresponding decrease in the y variable by the number that we see here in the coefficient. Sometimes the coefficients would vary. There would be coefficients that are below 1. And that would depend on the context. Right now, what we have here is a value that's really high because we are looking at very static numbers, which would be numbers of weekly writers, price per week, etc. But if we are studying something that's very people-centric, we could get a number below 1. And it is treated differently because if that is the case, then the 1 here in the coefficients is considered as 100%, and the closest the number is to 1, the stronger the 
relationship is between the variables. For, but for this one, we can't really say that there is a strong relationship. It's just showing you values of how much y would decrease for every unit of x variable. So let us try to write this down as an equation. So as an equation, we have y, or number of weekly writers, is equal to negative 744.748674x plus the intercept that is 197208.3412. What does this mean? It means that for every increase of x, there's a corresponding decrease in the number of weekly writers by 744. 0.74874. And if the value of x is 0, or the price per week is 0, the number of weekly writers become 197.208.3412. Now, depending on the interpretation or the results from the regression analysis, you can derive your further analysis about what it means to have a negative relationship between the variables. This is our simple linear regression. Now let's go to a multilinear regression, which means we're going to include all the other variables that we have here. So we're going back to data by clicking this tab, and then we go to data analysis and choose regression. We're going to retain the input y range because we're going to study the same dependent variable, which is the number of weekly writers. What we're going to change would be the input x range because instead of just x1, we are going to highlight all of these numbers that we have here. And then our output range could also change. Earlier, we had it at h3 cell. And if you don't change it, everything here that you have will be overwritten. So make sure that you choose a different cell unless you're OK that the result here would be overwritten by the new result. And we press OK. So we have here a new summary output. Again, let us look at the significance level. We have a value that is below 0 0.05. So it means that our model is significant and it is subject for further study. Next, we go to R square. It is close to 1. And so it means that we have a very strong goodness of fit, which is good. Also, we have here adjusted R-square. What does it mean? Adjusted R-square is looked at when you added variables to the original regression model. And so if we consider the simple linear regression as the original one, we added variables, which are x variable 2, 3, and 4, then we can look at the adjusted r-square and we can even compare. So before the r-square is 0 0.933 and when we added new variables, the adjusted r-square becomes 0 0.9356 and it actually improved. So it means that by adding variables, it improved our model and it is also a strong goodness of fit. And so we move on to the p-values. I'm going to highlight here the p-values for the different variables that we have. For the x variable, similar to the previous model, it is below 0 0.05, and so it is significant. As for x variable 2 and x variable 3, they are, they are greater than 0 0.05, and so it means that these variables are not significant in relation to our y variable, which is the number of weekly writers. And with that, these variables are eliminated and are no longer subject for further study. For x variable 4, we have 0 0.05100398. Although if you round it up, it will give you 0 0.05. But then by actually looking at its number, its raw number, it is actually higher than 0 0.05 by 0 0.001. And so we still reject it. Now, we will only focus on the significant variable. And the next step is to look at the coefficient. For the coefficient, we have here a negative 689.5227, and it means that 
since it is negative, every unit increase in x variable 1 gives you a decrease in variable y by 689.522. And if you're going to write it down as an equation, we have y is equal to negative 689.5227 plus the intercept that is 100,222.5607. Sorry, there has to be an x here. Okay. So if our x is 0, which is the price per week, then the number of weekly riders become 100,222.5607. So that is our multiple linear regression. And that concludes our lesson for using Microsoft Excel when doing regression analysis. If you have any questions, you may comment on the comment section below or send me a private message. That's all. Thank you.